Hello, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And this year, we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation as a Bible study, but we're gonna do it in small little bite-sized chunks. So every single video is only gonna be about between five and 10 minutes. We wanna make it simple. We wanna slow it down, uh, take things as it comes so that you don't get confused, so that you can follow along easily, and we encourage that. Please grab your Bibles and follow along with us. We're still only in Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to be picking up at verse 10. Uh, we talked a little bit about the church in Smyrna, and Jesus had said some things about how they were currently being persecuted for their faith. And I'll spoil it a little bit for you in these seven letters to the churches. This is right about the time where Jesus will say, here's what I like, here's what I like, here's what I like, but, and then he throws out uh, a piece of criticism, and we've seen that with the churches we've looked at already. Watch what he says in verse 10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And for 10 days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So, the bad news here for Smyrna isn't that they have somehow lost their first love or forgotten Jesus or they're not giving enough money to the poor. No, the bad news for Smyrna is they're not out of the woods yet. Jesus said, you guys have suffered. There's more suffering to come. Jesus says, this will continue, right? More persecution is coming. And then he adds though, he adds, do not be afraid. He says, don't be afraid about what you're going to suffer. You know, you're going into prison. Don't fear. You're going to be tested, he says, for 10 days. Don't fear, even if, Jesus says, it leads to death. You know, we throw around the word test a lot in our faith. We say, I'm being tested, or, you know, I think this is a test of my faith. And testing has a lot of different types of meaning. Um, sometimes you test a substance, right, to see if it has a certain property. Here in Smyrna, this isn't a test of knowledge. It's not a written test, right? We can say things like, well, prison, prison's a test, or poverty's a test, or persecution's a test, or torture is a test. Sometimes people in our life pass away, and we wonder if that's a test. The test here for Smyrna is a test of being faithful, right? Standing by God. How much do you trust God to get you through this? How much do you love God to get you through this? Are you still going to follow God even when you're tested? Are you still going to pray? Are you still going to love? Because it's easy to love and follow on a good day, right? It's easy to belong during times of prosperity. But when you tighten the screws on anything, you watch people fall away. Persecution can often be a test. Things are tough right now. I know, things are tough right now. I was just asked at my most recent doctor's visit by the doctor and the nurses if I thought we were living in the end times. We got coronavirus, we have civil unrest, we have all kinds of weird things happening in nature, explosions. But, you know, all in all, I still believe that life is still pretty good. Life is still pretty good. We have more good times, more happiness, more blessings than not. And I know that we're all at different points of that right now. I know we're all experiencing different levels of blessing right now. I get that, but tell me something. What if tomorrow being a Christian was illegal? What if tomorrow you could actually be thrown in jail or killed for going to church? What if being a Christian in Texas or America were hard? How many people do you think would still show up? How full 
would our megachurches be if being a Christian was against the law? Because I think some people would ask, is going to church worth your life? Is gathering to worship God worth your life? Jesus looks at this church in Smyrna and he says, you know what, there's no poor people here. You are all rich. He says, there's no weak people in your church. You are all strong. Verse 10 says, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days, you will have tribulation. And some Bible scholars believe that the 10 days are actually 10 different Roman emperors. Persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire occurred off and on for about two centuries. Jesus says, be faithful, even to the point of death, and then I will give you the crown of life. Jesus never promises Smyrna that things will get better. Right? And he never promises us that things will get better. In fact, Jesus often warns that things will get worse. And Jesus says, don't fall away, even if it leads to death. You know, in other countries, people stop going to church because their church got burned down. People stop going to church in other countries when there's armed guards outside. People stop going to church when church members start getting killed in the streets. In America, we stop going to church because our new worship leader doesn't play the church songs we like. In America, we stop going to church if the pastor preaches about money too much, or if it's Missionary Sunday, or if the pastor's wife is in the pulpit. That's all it takes. That's all it takes for us to walk away and to turn our backs on God. The church asks for my money way too much. The church doesn't sing my favorite hymns. But look at what Jesus says next to the church in Smyrna in verse 10. He says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Jesus says persecution is not the end of the story. Jesus says there is also conquest. He comforts these people in the midst of their persecution. And then he calls for the conquest of it. How are we able to endure these times? We are only able to endure through the power of Jesus Christ, in Christ alone. He will give us the power and the strength to conquer tribulation. We are victorious because the cross is victorious. We triumph because Jesus triumphed. We can overcome because he first overcame, and we live because he lives. Jesus is our victory. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.